Let's go. Romans chapter 8. We're going to pick up in verse 26, and we're going to jump right into this. I am very excited to share just three verses with you as we continue to unpack Romans chapter 8, verse 26 to 29. We're going to read today. I'm reading it out of the NLT. And it says this, and the Holy Spirit helps us in our weakness. For example, we don't know what God wants us to pray for. That's interesting. We don't know what God, I know what God wants me to pray for. Okay. But Romans chapter 8, verse 26 says, for example, we do not know what God wants us to pray for. But the Holy Spirit, oh, this is some good news. But the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. And the Father who knows all hearts knows what the Spirit is saying. For the Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony. I'd love you to highlight that word harmony. Highlight that word harmony. Believes in harmony with God's own will. My guy with the yellow highlighters got it. And we know that God causes everything. Everybody say everything. And God causes everything. We'll say it together. And God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purposes for them. We are all called according to his purposes for us. We decide whether or not we are going to love God and be called according to his purposes. The most wild thing takes place here. We are not only selected, we are also appointed and we choose by free will what we believe in. Anybody with me? Today you have a choice. You either could decide to live the world's way or you can live God's way. Today there's a whole bunch of believing people in this room that have decided I'm not going to live the world's way. I'm going to live God's way. God's got a better plan for you than the world has for you. This is an old message, but it's a fresh message. It's a good message. It will encourage you today. It will lift the head of the discouraged as we begin to realize that God's word is able to heal us and to change us. We have to realize that we do live in a modern world, in a secular society, in a, in, a, uh, in a secular world that thinks to themselves that they want everything they want right now. They want the gospel microwave. They want their food microwave. They want everything instantaneously. But how many know that the good things in life are worth waiting for and they are something you will have to wait for? God does not just want you happy. Do you know that? In fact, I have a question for you today, and I'd love to look at Scripture, but does God want you happy or holy? See, we live in a world like God wants me happy. Does he want you happy, or does he want you holy? Let's look really quickly. In 1 Peter 1.16, it says this, be holy because I am, does it say be happy because I am happy? No, it says, be holy because I'm holy. But I got good news for you. Happiness is a byproduct of holiness. So if you want to be happy, it's a good idea to live holy. And when we talk about happiness, we're not talking about this moment state of of just, oh, it's everything's good. You know, this new guy that I like DM'd me and I just feel good today. Never happened to anyone in the room. That's weird. Interesting. Um, you know, I, I just feel happy today because I don't, I don't, I feel good. I feel good. I feel, 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 feel. We live in a world of feels. We, we, no, it's not just about feeling good. In fact, sometimes I don't feel very good. Anybody else in the room? Can we be real this morning on this Sunday morning? 
I don't always feel good. But just because I don't feel good doesn't mean I can't have joy from God. That I can't realize that there is so much goodness as I surrender my life to him and serve him. In fact, some of the richest, most amazing, most beautiful things I have experienced through God did not come through happy moments. They came through trying and difficult moments as God was changing me into and conforming me into his image. God doesn't want you just happy. He wants you holy. Hello? Man, but, you know, we're reading a lot about the Holy Spirit here. We're reading about prayer, and we're reading about the presence of God. And, and sometimes, you know, there are people that pray a lot. How many people know somebody that prays a lot? I love people that pray a lot. Uh, they're, they're amazing. I, I think I am learning to pray more and more in my life. Is that okay to say as a pastor? I am learning the power of prayer more and more. I pray you don't have leaders that think they know everything. Hello. But they are on a journey of growing in their own prayer life. They're on a journey of growing in their own admiration for God. They're learning more about the word of God. And I am learning in my own life the power of prayer. I love prayer. I'm grateful for our intercessory prayer team. Do you know in our church we have intercessors who literally, they have a gift from God to pray. We read that the Holy Spirit also makes intercession for us, which we're going to get to. But today, you have power from God in prayer. Prayer is one of your most powerful weapons. Some people would look at Niagara Falls and they could point at it and say, that is the most untapped powerful resource in the world. Guess what? It's not the most untapped powerful resource in the world. The Holy Spirit is the most powerful untapped resource for the believer, and we typically do not access it. But as we access it through prayer, it is powerful and it will change us. But have you ever met anybody who prays a lot, but they're not very nice? Oh, yeah, I'm going to go there. No one's safe today. No one's safe, just so you know. You, you ever meet those people like really Christian, pray a lot? Tell you to pray a lot, but they're not very nice. So I, I, didn't, I didn't grow up in Hawaii. That's, you can laugh there. It's fine. It's fine. I didn't grow up in Waimanalo. <laughs> like, Duh. Uh, yeah, bro. We, we see it. Um, but I grew up in this little small town called Montauk on the eastern end of Long Island. I used to go there every single summer with my family, and we would stay out there. We lived on a sailboat, this little 28-foot sailboat. Every summer there was, there was three boys, and sometimes our friends, we packed on the sailboat. There was no AC. It was very hot in summer, but it was amazing. And we slept on this little boat, and we used to come out. And it was like a clown car. You'd see all of our family get out, and people would look on, like, bigger boats and be like, how do they fit in there? It was amazing. We loved it. But we got to know all the local people in this community. You go to the same surf break and you surf every day together. You go to the same place and fish, the same stores. And there was this little restaurant called Joni's. If you ever go to Montauk, you got to go to Joni's. Go tell Joni that you know the Termini boys. If you pray a lot and you're not nice, though, don't do that. Don't do that. Okay, but I will never forget, I asked a couple of uh, some friends. Actually, that's not true. Those friends were out there, and they asked me, where should we go to eat? And I said, okay, you're from another church in New York City, and you're coming out here to spend the weekend. And like, yeah, we're on a prayer retreat. I said, that's amazing. We're on like a prophetic retreat. I'm like, that's amazing. And they're like, yeah, we just want to know a place to eat. So I said, come to Joni's. I'll be there at 8.30 a.m. You come meet me at Joni's. So we go to Joni's. They're standing outside of Joni's, and all my friends are walking by, and we're in this little circle, and they're talking about all the prophetic things God showed them last night. They're talking talking about all the prayer things that they heard. And it was amazing. We're like, cool, cool. But all my friends are walking by, so I'm trying to say hi to friends, and I'm trying to talk to them. And, and they're kind of focused on what they're doing. And we go up to the counter, and they go and order. And when they go up to the counter and order, the first, within three minutes, you ever know those Christian people that they have to tell you that they're a Christian? So they, they say, hey, we're Christians. We're here for a prayer retreat. The lady at the, behind the counter does not care, by the way. I don't even know if she should. But, but she, she goes behind the counter, and she goes, hey, um, Listen, can we order some food? Well, the food didn't come out fast enough. And they started being rude to Joni and one of the staff members. Being like, hey. So I'm standing outside. And now you, you guys know me by now a little bit, right? You know my reaction is going to be. They come outside. I'm like, hey, listen, I don't care if you're here for a prayer retreat or not. Let me tell you right now, these people, I've known my whole life. 
They don't need to know you're a Christian. They already know my dad's a pastor. They know, they've seen my brothers act a fool. They've seen us do well. They've seen all kinds of things. But if you come out here to this little community and you're not kind and nice to the people behind the counter and you want to tell them you pray, what good are you doing for the gospel? Hello. So one of the results of holiness is not that you pray a lot. Hello, church. It's that you are conformed into the image of Christ, which is you are bearing the fruits of the Holy Spirit. You are gentle. You are kind. You are long-suffering. You are the things that are displayed in the Holy Spirit displays inside of you, like waiting online and not being impatient when your food comes. I'm not saying I'm the most patient person in the world. I'm just saying, let's be kind. And holiness is not a result of your outward, uh, of your inward prayer life. It's a result of the Spirit of God continuing to work inside of you. Now, is prayer important? Yes, it is your superpower. It is something that will literally transform your life from the inside out. Are you with me? So last week we covered a bunch of different topics. One thing we got last week, was anyone here for our GPA? We got our GPA, our 4.0 GPA in the, in, in the Holy Spirit. If you didn't get to watch it, you can watch it on YouTube. You can check it out. But today, I want to give you four things that the Holy Spirit gives to us, the advantages of the Holy Spirit, and we're going to wrap, okay? But we talked about Through this passage so far in Romans chapter 8, and I'm going to ask you to stay with me, we talked about three different groanings, and now we are on the last groanings. Some of you are like, what's a groaning? I know, it's in the Bible here three times. A groaning is this this deep desire. It's this need for something that it does not have yet. It's this agony. It's this pain. It's this combat that we find ourselves in as believers. We are groaning. The Bible says that there are three types of groaning. And here in Romans chapter 8, I'm going to cram real quick if you weren't here last Last week, so don't worry. There are three types of uh, groanings. The first groaning is a creation groaning, which we read in verses 18 to 22. Then we talked about last week the believer's groaning, which is in 23 to 25. And today we're going to talk about the Holy Spirit groans, which is in 25 to 30. And what is this groaning? This groaning is a sense that we have this eternal power inside of us, living in us, and we are waiting for a future glory. We are waiting for Jesus to make us right. We know that this natural body that we are in is decaying. It is breaking down. But we also believe that the Holy Spirit is breaking forth from us. And we believe that we are eternal. This glass, I said last week, is not completely full. Now, it's really not completely full. It's half, it's half full or half empty, depending on how you look at it. But just because it's not full does not mean it's not real. And some of us, we have a partial reality of the gospel, but we do not have it full yet. Some of us have a partial experience with the presence of God, but we are not full yet. But just because it's not full yet does not mean it's not real. And one of the things that we have in our lives as we, as we live in the tension of being the person we want to be and not being it yet is that we have a real experience with God, but sometimes our natural bodies do not experience that out or work that outwardly. Does that make sense? And so I want to encourage you today, even if it's not full, it's still real. And God is working through it. You with me? It says this in Psalm 34, 8. It says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the one who tastes and sees that God is good. I love this. When we read this, we realize that God is good, God is faithful, and we taste it and see that God is good, and we experience like a worship moment in church, and then when we leave church, we don't feel that anymore. Anyone with me? Like, you're like, I want, you ever feel like, I want to get back to that? Anybody ever feel like that in their faith? Like, man, I'm, I just, I can't hear from God anymore. Anyone ever been there? I just, I don't hear him anymore. And why are you feeling like that? Because you once did. Or you had a moment where you tasted. I want to encourage those of you who have been disheartened by that feeling of, of being there and going, I have tasted it, but I don't know, I don't feel it right now. I don't, I'm not experiencing it right now. I want you to know that that's part of the creation story. And just because you have tasted it and you have not seen it, it's not an indication, hear me, it's not an indication that you are missing out. 
You see, one of the lies that we could tell ourselves is I'm missing it. You, we live in a world that tells you you're missing it. You're missing the life hack that's going to change your life. If you do this four or five breathing exercises, this is going to change your life. If you read the Bible this way, you'll get it right. You scroll through Instagram because the culture is telling you you're missing it. I came here this Sunday morning to let you know you're not missing it. You are just have, you've just experienced something so beautiful, you want more of it. And what you're praying for and believing God is, I want more. And some of us, as we get older and we get more mature in the faith, we are longing for the day where we are with Jesus because we realize that these bodies, they are decrepit. They are falling apart. Some of you are like, my body's not falling apart. I feel amazing. Good for you, but at some point, it's going to hurt. And at some point, this body is going to age. But I'm so grateful you're not missing out on it. The Holy Spirit is just drawing you to himself because he wants to do something wonderful inside of you, which is allow the resurrection power of God working inside of you. Can you say this with me? Holy Spirit, fill my heart, fill my mind, fill my spirit. I want to experience you. This is why the believer worships and prays God. This is why the Holy Spirit, we're asking for the Holy Spirit to come. We're asking for him to come so he would move in our hearts and our minds. You ready? I want to give you four advantages of the Holy Spirit. You with me? The first one. It, last week I gave a GPA. I can't help myself. I just wanted to do this. But I didn't give you a 4.0. So you could say these are the 4.0 if, if you care about that kind of stuff. I don't know. That's how my mind works. You could call it the four corners of the Holy Spirit. We should explore all the four corners of the Holy Spirit here in Romans 8, verses 26 to 30. Okay, let's keep going. First one, the Holy Spirit is a helper. This is big news. The Holy Spirit is a helper. Who said this? Who said that the Holy Spirit's a helper? Jesus said it. Jesus said the Holy Spirit there is to help you. It's not there to harm you. It's not there to pull you down. The Holy Spirit is there to help you. You have the Holy Spirit. We believe in the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Jesus says it's better that I go away. I am not here in person, in the flesh, so that you could have the advocate, the Holy Spirit, who comes alongside you to help you. I love this. It says, and the Holy Spirit helps us what? In our what? In our weaknesses. Weaknesses, another word here could be, other translations use infirmities. Do you know what this is? It's not a specific weakness. It's the totality of weakness that we experience in a fallen world. Let, let, me, let me outline what these are. Our, our weakness are these things. It's our ignorance. We have a level of ignorance, so the Holy Spirit helps us. We have a le level of of conscious failures, so the Holy Spirit helps us. You have some failures that you have that you're conscious of, is that correct? The Holy Spirit helps you in those. Your earthliness, are you earthly? Yes, you're earthly. You, 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 you're literally, you, you're on earth. Okay, your earthliness, God helps you. The Holy Spirit helps you in your earthliness. Our worldliness, our, 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 our inability to be like heaven, to be like glory. The Holy Spirit is there to help you, not harm you, not to blame you, not to point a finger at you, but to love you. Is that good news? It helps us in our selfishness. Are you selfish? I'm going to raise my hand. I'm selfish sometimes. The Holy Spirit helps me when I'm selfish. Isn't this good news? It helps me in our deadness. Some of you are dead inside in certain areas. You are not fully alive to the gospel yet. But the Holy Spirit is a helper that comes alongside each and one of every single one of us and helps us. Is this good news? Our inconsistencies. Anybody have any of those? Okay. Again, a lot of perfect people in this room. Our inconsistencies <laughs> helps us. In our faintings, in our failures, it helps us. In our weaknesses, it helps us. In our emptiness, some of you, you feel empty. But I love that imagine there was a scale of emptiness and there was on the other side of the scale fullness. Do you know what the Holy Spirit does? The Holy Spirit comes where you're feeling empty and it balances the scale with God's fullness. So you begin to experience the fullness of God. He is a helper. John 14, 26. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you 
all things and remind you of what I have said. For Monday, the Holy Spirit teaches you and reminds you. Is that good news? You may not know everything, but the Holy Spirit will teach you and remind you. It will teach you and remind you that you are doing better than you think you are. Somebody say, I'm doing better than I think I am. Why? Because you got the helper, the Holy Spirit, to help you. I want to take a moment, and I want to talk to every person who have, has come to THE for the last year or so, year and a half. I want you to know I see how you are changing. I see what God is doing in your life. You are not the same person that walked in here a year ago. Can, can, I, get a, can I get an amen to that? Who, who has experienced what God has done in their life? The Holy Spirit is at work in your life. And, and don't compare yourself to the guy that maybe has a torn up old Bible and has been doing this for 50 years. God bless him, by the way. Go, go speak to him. But I want you to know you're not far behind. You're right where you're supposed to be today. And the Holy Spirit is doing a work in you right where you are today. Isn't that good news? And I want to let our church know I'm proud of our church. I'm proud of this community. It's an honor to be your pastor and to serve you in this season. It is incredible. I've been talking to some of you individually about what God is doing in your life, and it's amazing. You've experienced breakthrough. You have seen God do miracles, and some of you need to remind yourself, and I believe the Holy Spirit, even right now in this room, is reminding you of the good work that he has been doing inside of you. Do not grow weary in doing good. In due time, you will reap a harvest if you do not quit. Is that good news? God is doing more than you can see right now. I read a study, and they're reporting that this generation has the lowest level of efficacy of any other generation. Do you know what that is, efficacy? Efficacy is the ability to do something, to accomplish something. We, we blame a lot of our lack of efficacy right now our ability is that we have some of the brightest, smartest, most incredible young people, but they do not believe they do it. And you know what they blame? blame? They blame it on mental health. This is real. This is culture. I'm talking culture now, not church. We are in a culture that says you are sick in your mind and you cannot accomplish it. You cannot go forward. You're bright. You're talented. You're gifted, you're resourced, but you cannot move forward because you're depressed. You're anxious, you're overwhelmed. My wife is a, a phenomenal neuropsychologist. I'm so grateful for her. Her and I for years inside the church have been talking about getting treatment and making sure that you can go see a therapist, that it's okay, it's not ungodly to do so. But today I feel the need to tell you also, you have to be careful that you don't become therapized. You don't over therapy, give yourself over therapy. Meaning everything you look at is you are assessing whether or not you've got some sickness. If your mind is set on your sickness and not on God's wholeness and not on the helper, the Holy Spirit, you are going to remain sick and your efficacy is going to stay really low and you're not going to feel empowered to do what God has called you to do. Yesterday, I was down in Waikiki, if you haven't noticed, I'm a white dude that got super burnt. And I was, I was down there, and I was with my daughter, and it was plate glass. Sorry, this is on Friday. It was plate glass. And so I did a super touristy thing with her because we were down there. I was like, I'm going to hop on that one of those catamarans. And so one of the guys is like, where are you visiting from? I'm like, uh, it's fine. Here's my $40. So I gave him my 40 bucks, and Izzy and I hopped on this catamaran, and it was plate glass in Waikiki. I mean, it was beautiful. But, man, we got off a of black point, off a of diamond head. That wind just kicked up, and it was crazy. But on the shore, you didn't see any wind. But once you got out of Black Point, man, it was howling. And you see all the guys doing downwinds. You're like, this is no joke. And the Holy Spirit is a wind in your life. It's a power in your life. And sometimes from the beach of anxiety, from the beach of fear, from the beach of being overwhelmed, it looks like there's no power out there. But I want to encourage you to get into the spiritual boat of your life, begin to take steps, leave the shore, and believe God that he is going to empower you by the Holy Spirit. We don't know where the wind goes or where it goes, but it blows. And I believe right now, God 
God's wind in your life is going to move you forward in ways that you could not have imagined. Where's my believers at? I believe that. Number two, number two, the Holy Spirit is an interpreter. An interpreter. But the Holy Spirit prays for us with groanings that cannot be expressed in words. Again, some of you are new to faith. You need a spiritual interpreter. The Holy Spirit is your interpreter. The Holy Spirit will speak on your behalf. The Holy Spirit will help you. The Holy Spirit will encourage you. It will interpret things that you cannot read. When you are reading the Bible, you could say, Holy Spirit, can you reveal this to me? Holy Spirit, can you show this to me? Holy Spirit, can you help me become all that you've called me to be? Are you praying prayers like that? Don't just read it and go, I don't understand, in my head. You're not supposed to just get this in your head. If your head grows and your heart doesn't grow when you're reading this book, you're reading it wrong. Hello. I sat with a man not too long ago, maybe last night for a couple hours at the mall. I don't know why I did this. He had a big Bible. We sat down, started to quote scriptures to me. We may or may not got into a little of an argument. And I just said to him, I'm like, man, I just, I don't know as enough as you. I don't know enough as you. What, what was that? What, I mean, a sentence. Clearly, I don't know as enough as this guy. But I was like, I don't know. Jeez, man, you know way more. I feel small. I feel inferior. I feel like, man, you know. You just have way more Bible knowledge than I do. Man, I feel just depleted. Is that the way God wants you to feel? Absolutely not. He wants you to know that today, by the wind of the Holy Spirit, you are empowered. And God is your interpreter. The Holy Spirit is the presence that will interpret things in your life. Have you ever gone and visited a place that you are not from there? And when you go, if you can find a local interpreter, if you can find a local tour guide, that's what the Holy Spirit is. It's your local tour guide. It's the person who shows you around the scripture and encourages you, reminds you, and teaches you. Is this not good news when you open your Bible this week? I think sometimes we, and I'm going to say this, even as a believer, I forget this sometimes. I'm, I'm approaching the Bible with, okay, what did N.T. Wright say about this? What did Oswald Chambers say about this? What did the scholar from this sector? And I, and I love it, by the way. I do. I really love that. But i got to be careful that I don't give man more credit than I give the Holy Spirit credit in my life. God and his presence is speaking to me. The Holy Spirit is an interpreter. And he is going to help you see things in Scripture that others will not see. I think it was Job. Right in the book of Job, there was the son of Elihu. Who was the son of Elihu? The son of Elihu was one of the men who confronted Job. He said, I thought it was age that should speak. But he said, I realize that it's the spirit of God in a man. It's the Spirit of God living inside of you. And I don't care where you are on the journey. God can speak to you today. God can give you a word in season. You don't need to know everything, but you need to know what you need to know for the next step. And God will give you and empower you for heaven for the next step on your guide through, the, through, the, through this life. God is going to empower you. Are you with me? But the Holy Spirit prays with us with groanings that we cannot express in words. John 16, verse 13, it says, but when, but when he, the spirit of truth comes, this is Jesus, he will guide you into all truth. The Holy Spirit, when he comes, he will guide you into all truth. Anybody going, I, I really want to know the truth, ask for the Holy Spirit to guide you into the truth. Say it with me, Holy Spirit, guide me into the truth. That might have been the most powerful thing you have done all week. Just ask the Holy Spirit, guide me into the truth. For he will not speak on his own. How good is this? We, we got so many people talking on other people's behalf, telling people what they think. Even today, I am interpreting scripture, for, scripture to you. I don't want you to hear from me. I want you to hear from the Holy Spirit. Because I'm not trying to raise a Sunday morning, church. We need Monday morning faith. Come on, church. We need to get this thing inside of us on Monday morning. And on Monday morning, when you open your scripture, the Holy Spirit is going to speak to you. Oh, man, this is good news. 
He's going to lift your head on Tuesday. He's going to help you get through Wednesday. He's going to help you walk through Thursday. On Friday, when you're feeling overwhelmed and all your friends are about to go out and party, and they're like, do I drink? Do I go get messed up? Or do I stay home, be lonely? I'm going to call one of those praying people. Man, you never know what God. God will guide you into all truth. He will help you. He will speak to you on his own. He will not speak to you on his own, but whatever he hears, he will speak and he will disclose to you what is to come. How great is that? He's going to tell you about what God's going to do, how God's going to help, how God's going to serve you. He's talking about, yes, in the future, in the age to come, but also whatever you're facing right now. The Holy Spirit is kind to you, not just for some future glory. He's kind for you for what you need right now. Number, number three, are you with me? What was number one? The Holy Spirit is a helper. Number two, the Holy Spirit is an interpreter. Number three, we okay? How am I doing, babe? Okay. Are we enjoying this? Okay. Number three, the Holy Spirit is an intercessor. What's an intercessor? Somebody who stands in the middle. Somebody who is between you and God. An intercessor. Somebody who stands in the gap. Who, who intercedes for you, who believes for you, who prays for you, who is there for you. How good is it to know that the Holy Spirit is an intercessor? So you're here on earth, God is in heaven, and our umbilical cord to heaven is the Holy Spirit, and he's our intercessor. He is the one who nourishes us. God sends all the substance through the umbilical cord to us. He is our intercessor. He is our connection point to heaven. He is our connection point to eternity. Jesus said, it is better that I go away so I could send the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is with you today. The Holy Spirit is here for you today. Have you ever had anyone tell someone about you? Have you ever asked somebody, hey, I want to get this job. Can you put in a good word for me? You know what some of you need to do right now? Holy Spirit, say it with me. Holy Spirit, can you put in a good word for me? Can you let God know I'm doing my best? Can you let God know I'm called? Can you know God know I love him? Can you let God know that I'm for him? Can you let God know I know he's for me? Can you let God know that I need his help right now? You know how good it is to have God put in, a, the Holy Spirit put in a good word for you? It is powerful. You don't realize, but the Holy Spirit is literally in heaven making intercession for you before the throne room of God. Going, hey, Father, Son, I got a young man, I got a young woman down here on earth, and they're going through some hell and some high water. I say we send some some resources. I said we send some joy. I say we send some peace. I say we send some love. I say we send some grace. I say we send some hope. That is what the Holy Spirit is doing for you on your behalf. Some of you don't even know what to pray. You're praying for the car. You don't need a car. You need peace. Some of you are like, I want money. You don't need money. You wouldn't do good things with money if you had it. Some of you need more grace. You need more hope in your life. You need more joy. Heaven doesn't give you what you want. Heaven gives you what God has for you. And I'm so grateful. Like a mature person, the Holy Spirit goes to heaven and approaches the throne room of grace. And you receive that which is good for you from the Holy Spirit that you need. Things that you want or things that the Holy Spirit knows you need. You see, we have to be careful because we can interpret this and be like, oh, so it's like a vending machine, the Holy Spirit. Just go to him, put a few dollars in, you say I can get whatever I want. No. He's going to give you what you need. That's the thing about an umbilical cord. A baby doesn't tell the mother what it needs. It's just naturally nourished by it. And some of you have not been naturally nourished because you have not been connected to the Holy Spirit. And that's going to stop today. You're going to make that connection today. You're going to start that connection like never before. You're going to realize the power and the advantages, as Jesus called them, the advantages that you have connected to the Holy Spirit, that he is going to empower you and release you. I'll never forget, I was in New York City. I used to wear a suit and tie every single day for eight years. 
I wore a suit and tie to the office, worked at a building called 200 Park, MetLife Building, sits right in the middle of Park Avenue. I worked with all these really wealthy men and women that were in commercial real estate. I worked for the number one profitable office in the world for the largest real estate firm in the world called C.B. Richard Ellis. And I used to go up to this office and I was interning for them in college. I played basketball with this guy who was the president and he said, hey, play on my basketball team and I'll get you an internship. I'm like, cool. So I get an internship, I go to this real estate office and I'm working in this office. Do you know why I was in that office? Because I went to Harvard. No. As dumb as dirt at that point. Still working on it. You know, I didn't have all, I didn't have all the right uh, knowledge. I, I didn't know all the right things to say. No, no. You know what I had? I had a relationship. And that relationship gave me access to a world I did not know before. Do you know that's what the Holy Spirit does for you? It gives you access to cities you have not known, places you have not been before. The Holy Spirit will bring you into places. And you get to go in and go, you you know, people might go to you, you don't belong here. You'll be like, you're right. But the Holy Spirit has shown me things I don't think I'm supposed to know yet. I don't think I'm supposed to see yet because God is that good. Do you believe you have a loving father that is that good? Jesus says it this way. He says, if a natural father will not withhold anything from his earthly children, how much so, how much so will, the Holy, will I, the God, the, my, my God, my Father, not withhold beautiful things from you? And he says, now I will give you the gift of the Holy Spirit. The, the Holy Spirit is an absolute gift to the believer, and we need to access to it. Let's remember what we've been talking about. We're going through the book of Romans right now. We're going through, we started with Romans chapter 8, verse 1, which it says what? There is no condemnation in Christ Jesus. We've gone through this restorative work of putting on the mind of Christ. We've walked through what it looks like as we walk through suffering in this world over the last eight weeks. And now we're on week nine, and we're talking about the power of the Holy Spirit in our lives. This is an absolute game changer, no no matter where you are on the journey. Are you with me? The Holy Spirit is an intercessor. And the Father who knows all hearts knows what the Spirit is saying. For the Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will. Freddie, you can come back up here. The Holy Spirit is an intercessor. The Holy Spirit wants to fill you today. He wants to help you. The truth is, a lot of our prayers, as we opened up with and read, we don't know what to pray. Our prayers are often immature. Our prayers are a low level of what God ultimately has for us. But God wants to lift our level. He wants to help us be all that he's compared to be. Do you know how he does that? He does that through the Holy Spirit. So think about this. This is wild. You could be praying for something and go, God, I really need help in this area. And you could even be explaining to God how you think you need help. But the Holy Spirit is not aligning with your will. How good is that? It's not aligning with what you want. It's aligning with what the Father has. And the word here, will, is in many other translations. You can look into it. It's, it refers to judgment. This is not for judgment. God's, the Holy Spirit is not looking at you for judgment. It's looking at you for love. Imagine that you are in love with somebody. If you are, the Holy Spirit loves you. God's presence loves you. If God loves you, is he trying to figure out ways to judge you? No, he's searching your heart. Where are the good things in his heart? Where are the good things in her heart? Isn't this good news? Isn't this freeing? The Holy Spirit's in looking inside you going, what have I put in there? Okay, let's draw that out. Let's pull that out. And what's happening is the last and not least thing that God does, and this is the first time I've really ever seen it this way, but the Holy Spirit is a harmonizer. The word harmonizer is used here. I I love this word. And the Father who knows all hearts knows what the Spirit is saying. For the Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will. Harmony. Harmony. Do you know uh, what I did a couple weeks ago? I didn't tell Freddie this yet. I'm going to tell him right now. We started started writing a a song for church together. Should we write some songs, T-H-E? It would be so cool, right? We started, we were working on this song. Um, what was it? We're talking about baptism. Out of the water, into the fire. Holy Spirit, fill this vessel. Holy Spirit, fill this vessel. Out of the water, 
into the fire. Holy Spirit, fill this vessel. Holy Spirit, fill this vessel. We're writing a song about baptism. I'm a terrible singer. I'm very aware. You don't have to laugh around. I'm not trying to sing. But we're writing this song. And so I, you know what I did? I downloaded an app because I was like, Freddie's trying to show me stuff, but I can't harmonize. I'm like, I got to learn some basic harmony. You know what I learned about harmony? I learned about harmony that has nothing to do with singing. It has everything to do with listening. 101, how do you harmonize? You listen to Freddie, not me. <laughs> no, that's not the right harmony. That's not the right key. But I love that, Freddie, can you do me a favor? Can you hit a note in harmony and then I'll try? Uh, no, watch Freddie do it. Uh, what? Do uh, Sing it? Uh, no, I'm gonna try to meet you. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> uh, 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 what am I doing with Freddie? What do I have to do though first? Listen, what do I have to do first? What do we have to do to harmonize? We have to listen. Do, do, do you know why you don't have God's will? Do you know why things are hard? Because you're not listening. You're not supposed to imagine your life. You're supposed to imitate God's life. You're not supposed to become your own person. You're supposed to become the child, the man, the woman that God has called you to be. You are supposed to allow the Holy Spirit to harmonize you. And today, some of you, you have been trying to sing your own note, your own key, and you are out of tune, and you are frustrated because you are trying to do it in your own strength, but you cannot do it in your own strength. You need the harmonization of the Holy Spirit at work in your mind and in your heart. The culture is a broken record, church. I'm going to say this, the church at times is a broken record, but I'm so grateful that Christ is not a broken Savior. He is a fully, completely whole God, and if we would simply say, God, I'm going to tune into the voice of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, speak to me, show me, reveal me, help me become the man, the woman that you've called me to believe. I be. I believe today you don't need a religion, you need a savior you need a restorer you need a helper for your soul and it is the holy spirit maybe you are in here and you have tried religion you have tried doing it on your own way maybe you have tried your mom's faith maybe you've tried the culture's faith but today you need to try something different i want to encourage you to open up your heart and your mind because i believe that the holy spirit is speaking to you today i don't think it's an accident that you're here today i I believe it's by design. I think Jesus planned this day a long time ago. I believe when he went to the cross of Calvary and died for your sins, he had you in mind. Today is the day of salvation. The Bible says do not wait another moment if you want to turn away from your old life and you want to turn to God and you want to begin to harmonize with the will of God. The Bible says this in Romans 8, and I love it. It says, and the Father who knows all hearts, knows what the Spirit is saying. For the Spirit pleads for us believers in harmony with God's own will. And we know, can we say it together one more time? And we know that God causes everything, say everything, to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purposes for them. Jesus, we want your will today. Holy Spirit, we invite you in. Would you speak to us?
we listen to your voice, not our own. We tune our ear toward you, Jesus. With every head bowed, every eye closed, if you're in this room and you feel like you've been far from God, I came here to tell you today that God is not far. He is right there. He is knocking on the door of your heart. If you would just listen and open that door and invite him in, your life will never be the same again. In Jesus' name. This could be the day that changes every other day. If you are in here and you need Jesus, I'm going to ask you to pray a very simple prayer with me. It's not by works. It's not by effort. It's not by striving. It's by simply inviting the presence of God, the Holy Spirit, God's own son, Jesus, to take up residence in your heart. And I believe he is the greatest interior decorator ever. He will rearrange the furniture of your life. He will restore you, heal you, take down walls where there's been walls up, and he will open up your view of who he is. He will show you light, air, and grace. He will give you a fresh start and a new beginning. If you were to die today and you don't know where you'd spend eternity, you can know today not because of what you have done right, but because of what he did on that cross 2,000 years ago. Today, I'm not asking you to receive a religion. I'm asking you to receive a relationship with your Savior. His name is Jesus. And if you are in here, every head bowed, every eye closed, if you're in here and you want Jesus, can you just raise your hand right now wherever you are? I see your hands all over this room. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for what you're doing, Holy Spirit. Thank you for your presence. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hands down. Church, could you say this with me? Say, Jesus, come into my heart. Live in me. Forgive me. Give me a fresh start. Jesus, I want to follow you. I want to be like you. I invite the Holy Spirit to come into my heart, to live in me, be my helper, be my intercessor, be my harmonizer, be my interceder. Help me, Jesus. Help me, Holy Spirit. In your name I pray. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, church, can we stand to our feet and can we thank God for all that he's done today? We love you, church. We're going to sing the doxology, and we pray you have an amazing week. God bless you.